Hi everyone, welcome to SAT2 Math 2C lectures. So in this series of lectures, I'm going to introduce um, the SAT2 Math uh, 2C test, uh, go over general topics, go over some very uh, uh, specific problem solving techniques, uh, give you guys a down um, what to avoid, what to do, what not to do on tests to make sure that you can achieve as a higher score as possible on the 2C test. So the first lecture is kind of an introduction. It's very short, it's very quick. Just give you guys a sense what you get you guys getting yourself into and some general strategies. So uh, topic one, just introduction and general strategy. So first thing, you know, if you're taking these tests, you want to know what you get yourself into. So let's take a look at a uh, math 2C test. Like all subject tests, math 2C test is one hour and you have 50 questions. All multiple choice, right? All multiple choice, uh, you have A through E. So five, five choices. And do a quick math. The way you're scored is very similar to all the other SAT uh, one portion of the math. Um, you get plus a point for everyone you get it right. You get subtract a, a quarter of a point if you get it wrong, and if you have uh, leave a blank, well, you get a blank. You, you don't get any points deducted. Um, so off the back, you know it's something weird, right? You're not used to actually getting points taking off on the test. Why do you think they put that there? This is there to penalize for random guessing, right? If you do not know the answer, do not take a random guess. That's what they try to discourage. Okay? Well, you say that's fine. That's fair. And if you do your math, do you ever not guess? Well, in general, uh, my strategy for SCT2 is that if you can eliminate two answer choices, then you should take a guess. Okay? If you eliminate two, you know these two are wrong then chances are, if you have no idea what's going on, you can take a guess. Although, I hope it doesn't come down to that. I hope that by going over all the topics, review all the topics, review the techniques, review the strategies, review how you should handle these tests, you won't get into yourself into a situation that you don't know what the answer is. But just in case, if you can eliminate two, you can take a guess. How does that work? Well, if you think about it, you have five, five um, let's say you have five questions, right? One, two, three, four, five. If you take a random guess, right, you have five answers. If you take a random guess, your chance of getting right is one-fifth, right? Just random, completely random. You don't eliminate anything, you take a random guess. And for five of them, you're going to get five questions. You're basically going to get one of them right, so you're going to get one point. But you're going to get four of them wrong. You get one-fourth a point deducted times four. You're going to get zero point. So completely, if you say, well, that's kind of not worth it, right? That's why they try to discourage you from guessing randomly. Because if you guess the entire test, you're gonna end up with zero points. Okay, raw score. We're all only talking about raw score here. But as you can see, if you can eliminate one, right? Then your odds are no longer one four, fifth, you become one fourth, right? And then you can do the math, you're gonna end up with a net score that's positive. I want to play conservative. I want you to be able to at least eliminate two. So even if you worst case scenario, take a random guess, you're going to get one third of it right. You have one third chance of getting right. That means every three questions you guess, you have a shot of getting one right. At least, of course, the lower the better, right? If you can eliminate three, definitely take a guess. If it's down to 50-50, take a guess. Okay? So that's just a general guessing strategy. I mean, you hear a lot of things say, oh, people say, you know, school of thought say, oh, well, don't guess at all. Some people say, oh, I'll guess randomly. No, eliminate at least two. Elim eliminate at least two answers before you guess. Now, how does this get translated? So when you have, so by the, the maximum points you can get on this test is really 50 points. That's assuming you do everything right, right? And if you do everything wrong, you get everything question wrong, you're going to get a quarter deducted by, you know, every point, and you're going to get 50 times negative 0.25. So you actually could end up with a negative raw score. And then they scale this up. So the person with the highest 
raw score. Whatever, maybe 50, maybe 48, maybe 49, we'll get an 800, and the lowest score will get a 200. And the rest will be actually normally distributed into a distribution curve that's between 800 and 200. So, does that mean you have to get 50 to get an 800 on a 2C? No. Historically, no one has gotten a perfect score. Or not enough people have gotten a perfect score that if you get a 49, you won't get an 800. What does that mean? In general, you have a little bit wiggle room that if you get two to three questions wrong, you can still get an 800. Okay? You can still get 800. So, um, depends on the level of the test. If the test is difficult, I could, I could imagine that if you go up to five questions wrong, okay, and you still end up getting 800, right? So, you always want to do the best you can, but just keep in mind, you don't need to get every single question right to get the 800, okay? That goes into the strategy. When you do the test, I usually like to recommend a multiple pass system. First pass, you do all the questions you can. Simple questions, things you can handle, all right? And then you go back, because I don't want you to waste time to, to, on a particular question that you think you cannot solve at all, right? And then the second pass, you're going to focus on a question that you think you can do, or it may, might take a little bit more time, and then do a couple layers, and you'll build up. Again, it's a personal preference. You can do what you think is best for you, but again, Time management is important because you think about it, you have 50 questions, you have an hour, which means it boils down to slightly more than a minute to do each question. However, the questions are ranked in order of difficulty. It goes from easy to medium to hard, and it's about a third and a third and a third and every single question is graded the same way, which means do not run through the initial question so quickly that you make a stupid mistake, you get them wrong, and spend 10 minutes on the last question. That's not worth it. Why? Because one question is worth a point. The easy question is worth a point. The hard question is worth a point. So please, please, make sure you pace yourself. Make sure you get all the easy questions right. Do it carefully, right? They're relatively easy. Make sure you get the medium questions, you know. Um, try to get all of them right as well. Harder question is what you need to work on. If you can do that, you're pretty much going to get somewhere at least between uh, 650 or above, okay? Just by making sure you get all the easy, the medium, and some of the hard questions right. That's not bad, isn't it? Right? So that's sort of the general overarching theme of the test you have you know, uh, an hour, 50 questions, and that's how the, the strategy works. In general, pace yourself, don't rush, okay? Don't sacrifice the quality at the beginning just so you can get to the end and mess up the questions at the end because they're all worth the same points. So slow down, take practice, know how you would like to pace the test, and follow that rule consistently, okay? So, um, in general, that, that's some of the strategies I would um, get involved. And as we go on a lecture, so what we're going to do from this point on, we are actually going to go through um, each specific topic that's on the test. And then for each topic, we're going to go through some example questions when I'm going to show you what's the best way to do this. A lot of questions on the test you can do, you know how to do. It just, if you don't do it the best way, you're going to run on time because time is essence of, on this test, right? Now, just one strategy I really want to talk about, and it could really make your life a lot easier, is it is a multiple choice question, right? Sometimes, just plug in the answer. Okay, what does that mean? If you have Right? If you have a question like this, and let's say hypothetically it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10, right? You get a question like this. Do you really need to go through all the steps to solve this? No, please don't do that. That's a waste of time. Why? 
in your math class because you 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 want to know how to factor this, how to reduce this down to a, a binomial, right? And then you can you can actually use different equations to solve this. That's what you want to do. However, on the SAT two, you don't have that kind of time. And guess what? They gave you the answers here. So one of them must work. Where do you start? You start with the middle one. Start with three, right? Plug it in. Why do I start with three? Because all the answers are ranked in order. They either go from small to big or big to small, right? If you plug in three, the answer turns out too big. You get like 20, right? That means what? These three are out. And remember what I said? If you can get rid of two answer choices, take a guess. You're down to two answer choices. So definitely take a guess, right? But this is not bad. Guess what? All you have to do is plug in two. If, if two doesn't work, answer choice is eight. If two works, bingo, you're done, okay? Work smart. Work smart on the test, and that's what this test is all about. And throughout all the um, subsequent lectures, I'm going to teach you the basics, what's ne what needs to be covered on the SAT2, but more importantly, I'm going to teach you how to solve these problems, and that's the key. A lot of you do really well in classes, and you say, why can't I can't get that 800 I really look for? Well, not because you don't know your math. It's because you don't really, uh, you're not really well versed in how they want you to solve these questions. Okay, and that's the key folks we're going to go on in lectures. I'm going to show you, yes, this is how you normally solve in class, but on the SAT2, this is what you do. This will take you about two seconds. If you try to actually do it the normal way, break down a polynomial, five minutes. Okay, so be intelligent, do the question smart. This, is, this test is not just a test how much knowledge you know. It is. It is how much you know, and if you take in uh, pre-calc, that's the, that's the minimum requirement you need to take this test, pre-calc. But you, if you think about it, it's not that bad, right? The key is how you're going to use these strategies, how you can implement these strategies, get maximum score. And that's what we're going to discuss in the subsequent lectures.